All right, let's do this. Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today I'm here in this little kitchen making chicken korma because I'm hungry and I need to eat dinner tonight. The reason I'm making this chicken korma and not my mum and the reason I'm doing it in this kitchen and not my one at home is because this is now home. Yeah, you heard right. I moved out. I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned this in a video, but I recently, and by recently I mean like two months ago, uh, I recently got a new job. It's based on the Sunshine Coast, which is kind of an hour and a half from Brisbane, which is where I was living. And so for six weeks I drove three hours a day, which was a lot of petrol, a lot of time and energy, and ultimately just not really sustainable at all. So now here I am, living on the Sunshine Coast, in a little granny flat, cutting up a chicken breast. So what I really wanted to talk about today while handling this raw chicken is transition and how I handle it, I guess. I find this so interesting to discuss with people and so I thought I'd make a little video out of it as a discussion, obviously, and content for YouTube, but also as a little thing for me to look back on and to see, kind of have a memory and a recount of how this whole crazy time went. It's just, it's crazy. It's actually insane because I can look at my brain. Oh, it's should not be doing that. Okay. Transition and change and different things have always been something that I have not been very good at processing. The thing about my brain that's really cool is that it's very good at surviving. It's very good at seeing bad situations and being able to emotionally step out of that and deal with it and kind of come back to the emotional part of it later. Now, <laughs> you're probably laughing because if you know anything about me, you know that I cry all the time. I cried for half an hour last night because there was this scene in Outlander, spoiler alert if you watch Outlander, um, but where Claire loses her baby in season two and she's in the hospital and Hildegard's there and she's like, where's my baby? Oh, flop. Well, that hasn't happened before. But yeah, so this terrible thing happened and I just cried for like half an hour. I just walked around my apartment and cried. It was so heartbreaking. But in that circumstance, I wasn't necessarily in any intense danger. There wasn't any immediate threat or thing that I had to deal with straight flop. Guys, I just want to cook chicken. I don't know what has to be this difficult. It's fine. It's just olive oil burning in the pan because I'm a terrible cook. But yeah, speaking of transition, normally when I process things, I go through a very definitive set cycle. It's kind of crazy. It's like even in my emotional state, I'm still incredibly rational, which is hilarious. If my cycle follows as I think it follows, um, my, the first week of something happening, it's great. It's really good. I'm really happy. I'm really enjoying it and I'm not stressed and I'm kind of just having a great time. Then the second week hits and I just go into a complete emotional meltdown. Normally I'm just so exhausted from the first week and like I've enjoyed the first week but it's been draining as because it's new and it's scary and it's all this kind of stuff. But by the second week, I'm just an emotional wreck. I just have nothing, nothing left in the tank to put into coping. So for the whole second week, I'm normally very sensitive, very upset about things. Third week hits, my emotions kind of start to pick up, but the exhaustion and emotional craziness has taken its toll on me physically. And then I get sick. I normally get a cold or a flu or a vomiting bug or some other kind of physical ailment that my body uses as a cry for help. Like, what are you doing to me? I'm freaking out and you're not stopping. And then normally by the fourth week, I'm kind of, I'm doing better. Still weak, still probably like 50% operating. And then by the fifth week, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty much back to where I was when I started and then I can start actually coping better than I was when I started, which is cool. So I'm currently in the second week of my transition cycle feeling pretty good actually. The incredible emotional low hasn't quite hit yet. There have definitely been hints of it, but I'm kind of on the lookout for emotional breakdown, which might actually mean that I notice things that aren't there. I was watching a video that Dodie made once and she mentioned this technique that her therapist had recommended, which was don't ask yourself how you're doing every morning when you wake up, because if you go looking for things, chances are you'll find them. But I think it's such great advice. And I know a couple of friends who have used that um, in practice of, of trying to like cope with depression and stuff and they found that if they don't look for it they're less likely to find it which is really cool so I'm kind of I'm trying to not actively think about the fact that I think an impending emotional breakdown is coming but honestly I think the biggest thing that I personally need to remember and this might be true for you as well 
is that when you're going through a big change, it's allowed to be scary. Even if it's an incredible opportunity, like getting an incredible new job or moving into a beautiful little flat or getting a new dog or something, you know, even if it's the most incredible experience and the most and the, and the hugest blessing, it is still big and it is still huge and you are allowed to need time to cope with that and you're allowed to need time to handle that. And when I first got the job and I went through this crazy cycle of, you know, being okay and then being emotionally sick and then being physically sick and then being half-hearted and then being fine, I was really angry at myself. And I was like, how dare you get so sick over this? Like, this should be an incredible, like, you're having a great time. There's nothing to be upset about. There's nothing to be scared about. Like, body, why are you being so dumb? And I've kind of had to have grace with myself and realize that it's okay to feel that way. And it's okay to be overwhelmed by things. And look, I know it's weird. I think it's weird. But crying out loud, it's so strange that my body doesn't behave like everyone else's in some regards. But... Whose body really does behave like everyone else's in all regards? No one's, because people just aren't built that way. So future Bella and also people who are watching this, have grace for yourself. It's okay to struggle with things. It's okay to be overwhelmed. It's okay to need to process. And just because you're struggling with coping with it doesn't mean you're any less grateful. It's getting to the complicated part of the meal where I've got to like add sauces and vegetables. So I think I'm going to cut it there because I've been feeling for like 26 minutes. If anyone else would love to talk about transitions and how people deal with changes, I would love to have that conversation. Hit me up. Comment section is great. Twitter is great. Instagram is great. Get in touch. Now that I'm here, I'm hoping to make more videos. Um, so let me know if there's a specific video or a specific topic you would like to hear about. I love to talk. I love to research things and chat about them. And I am really excited to eat this chicken korma because I'm hungry as. With that being said, I love you. Have a really good day. And I'll see you next time.